So good morning, everyone. Um, allow me to welcome you. I'm Nurhina Dalel from the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. And on behalf of the D4FNSA Consortium, I'd like to thank you for joining us today in this webinar co-organized by Siam Bari and uh, the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research in Egypt. The webinar is under the title of D4FNSA International Research Consortium Platform to bind together for the mid to the long-term Africa and European institutions in the FNSSA sector. So allow me to start by introducing our project and how we are transitioning the food nutrition security for sustainable agriculture from a partnership to a platform. The d 4 FNSA project is a coordination and support action uh, that is funded by the Horizon 2020. It's coordinated currently by FARA and previously by CIRAD. It's a four years project that will end this year in November um, 2022 with a budget of 5 million euros. We have 35 partners from Europe and Africa, as you can see. We have France, Germany, Austria, Denmark, Spain, Finland, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, Czech, UK, and Sweden. And from Africa, we have South Africa, Burkina Faso, Egypt, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, and Senegal. The main mandate of the project is to establish a sustainable structure or a platform for the efficient and coherent implementation of the EU-AU Research and Innovation Partnership, as described in the FNSSA roadmap, uh, prioritized under the Joint Africa-EU strategy of the HLPD. The strategic objectives uh, are being reached and implemented by the different work packages of the LEAP for FNSSA project. The first objective is to increase the synergies and coherence between actors to develop a learning environment and a large knowledge base, including monitoring and evaluation activities. The third objective is to establish a long-term and sustainable governance and a funding mechanism for the platform. And the last objective is to support the HLPD Bureau. So the Leap for FNSA project has been working to achieve this transition from the AU-EU partnership to the AU-EU IRC FNSSA platform that we will be discussing today. The implementation of the FNSSA roadmap is expected to be improved through the platform that we are planning. It is a platform of an alliance of stakeholders, including funders with a long-term and sustainable governance and funding mechanism, and a knowledge management and communication system that will inform policymakers and other major stakeholders in the FNSSA. So this platform is based on two things, the lessons learned from the FNSA partnerships and the roadmap and the success factors emanating from the Leap for FNSA project. So if we go from the first point, the first success factor and the, that has been done by the Leap for FNSA project up till now is the definition of a criteria for FNSA partnership projects, the monitoring and evaluation framework of the partnership and establishing a channel between the project and the policy processes through the HLPD Bureau and the SOMs. Now, the second point is the long-term cyclic programming process that's being also developed within the project, which includes the draft DCIPs, the knowledge management and communication framework, coordination hub, and clustering uh, network process. So these elements were derived under the PIMC model, which is a process guideline for cyclic program planning and management, and the coordination infrastructure to build an AU-EU knowledge management and communication framework. To exploit the full potential of the TCIP, a monitoring and evaluation and learning concept and framework is being developed together with the actor stakeholders and funding institutions. It is suggested to consider the implementation process of the TCIP and its application approach up to a final impact analysis in a circular cooperation model. After one cycle, the TCIP will form the basis for a reflection and the learning process, which might then lead to the development of a new TCIP in a next IRC cooperation cycle. The third point is the outreach and information channel for all stakeholders. We have, we have a database with all the FNSSA projects, over 300 projects, knowledge management tools, and uh, strengthened knowledge base. The fourth point, is the activities that we conducted um, in terms of raising awareness and reaching out to different stakeholders. 
uh, we've had several events that included decision makers, researchers, funding institutions, international organizations, former organizations, the industry and agribusinesses, with focus also in, on women and youth and researchers. We've also collected expression of interests from people to join this IRC that we're forming. Um, over 180 institutions expressed their interest in joining the process. And finally, we are currently conducting the IRC formulation and principles, the project and AU-EU platform TCIPs for having a common vision, the IRC roadmap, the visibility, governance, and ethics requirement. And all these achievements are proof that the Report FNSA project is on track to transition from the AU-EU partnership to the IRC FNSA platform. So briefly, what is an IRC? It is a group of committed institutions, including research and innovation institutions that agree formally um, to work together in existence of some sort of MOU signed by the heads maybe of these institutions to work jointly for the mid to long-term duration towards commonly defined goals. This is all under a shared uh, governance mechanism to implement activities that they commonly agreed on and supported by the resources whether in kind or in cash, by the disposal of the IRC and these institutions, including the resources that these institutions may have obtained from other sources. So then briefly to summarize this, the main principles of the IRC FNSA platform. The first point is inclusiveness, where we seek participation of institutions from different stakeholders and categories, whether in Europe or in Africa. Commitment as the member of um, membership of the platform is open to all institutions. R and I for impact focus on activities with a vision for an impact. Co-designing institutions joining this IRC are part of the process. Like here today, we we are asking you to please share with us your ideas on everything we present today because you're just not part of the product and the platform. At the end, you're joining us throughout the whole process. Pragmatism and the platform organization and content aim at being effective and innovative with the potential for leverage, while at the same time being pragmatic and building on what already exists. And the finally, the sustainability and adaptability and the platform is established for the long term, and this is thanks to the commitment of the founders. So today what we will discuss, the, the webinar is divided into two main sections. The first one is the IRC with more details on each element formulating this IRC, what, why, and how. And uh, we will present in this the, the strategy for launching the IRC by the consortium members of the project. And we'll focus on the process of, of launching and how the stakeholders will be integrated and a detailed description of the coming steps and the benefits of joining this IRC. The second section is about the enabling environment to launch this IRC where we will present some best practices from existing networks, and we will discuss how the IRC process and development could learn from these initiatives. So briefly, let me walk you through the agenda today. The first session, we have uh, the TCIP of the IRC by Stefan Hafen from DLR. We have the IRC services and functions, will be presented by Prudence Makura from NRF. We have uh, the IRC funding strategy by Henning Nipschild from BLE. We have the governance of the IRC by Irene Frampong from FARA, the coordinator of the project. After each presentation, we will ask you, please, if you have any questions or you want to discuss, we'll have a couple of minutes and then we will have a final discussion. Afterwards, we will move to the second session with the external speakers. First, we'll be discussing the Funders Institution and Funding Agency Network by Maurice Eral from ANR. We have the Agribusiness Network by Yusuf Ben Maid from High Atlas Foundation and the Research and Innovation Network by Anna Quarinda from Asarik. And then we will have a few minutes also for a final discussion and the wrap up of the webinar. So now allow me to move to the first session, IRC, what, why, and how. The first presentation is the theory of change and impact pathways of the IRC platform by Mr. Stefan Hafner, the senior scientific officer at the DLR. So just briefly um, about Stefan, he's a senior scientific officer, as I said, in DLR in the Department for European and International Cooperation. He's serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. And um, his role in the LIPOR FNSA project is the co-coordinating the Working Group Actors, Alliances, and Policies. 
And based on his experiences with the multilateral funding and collaboration process, he is currently focusing on the development of a long-term cyclic meta-governance model for the AU-EU partnership for R&I and capacity building. He also has experience in other several projects in collaboration between Europe and Africa in the field of STI and capacity building, including ERANET Co-Fund, the Era Africa and the Era Africa Initiative. And uh, he prepared the ground also, uh, his, uh, the Era Africa Initiative, I mean, prepared the ground for the ERANET Co-Fund LEAP Agri project and the RII LIPRI, which is focusing on renewable energy, and also um, will establish a thematic AU EU platform for RI, which is similar to the approach of the LIPRI FNSA project. He's also involved in the UFM in the development of three TCIPs the health, renewable energies, and climate change, which were adopted all in July 2021. He has a master's in geography and sociology. Uh, in Nepal in the context of development collaboration and his interest is now um, focused in participating in designing inclusive multi-stakeholder mechanism and coordinating infrastructure for the future AU-EU partnerships. So Stefan, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Norhan, and thank you also for moving my slides. Uh, colleagues, a warm welcome from my side. Um, a TCIP, what is it? We always have a big salad of abbreviations. And so I try to do my best not to use them and, and just to explain uh, the, the full terms of theory of change and impact pathway is an instrument uh, that we uh, choose to work on um, a perspective for the platform and also a kind of um, implementation process will be initiated with that. So therefore, just briefly, I'm explaining what is a theory of change and impact pathway in principle. It consists of two elements. The first element is a situation analysis. The second element uh, are roadmaps. <clears throat> what is behind that? Also that very briefly, in a situation analysis, we are focusing first on problems and causes of problems in a certain area. Uh, we are also looking at the context, doing a, a small stakeholder analysis, and then we develop from these two steps a SWOT analysis, so that at the end in such a document, the theory of change and impact pathway, you will find first a SWOT analysis, then the problems and causes, underlying causes of, of certain problem areas, and uh, the context and the stakeholder analysis. In the second step, the roadmaps, um, we are addressing specific challenges. We make reference to the sustainable development goals, and then we are developing in different roadmaps, uh, research and innovation agendas and capacity building agendas. And this includes always to define the desired impact pathways. And there we are distinguishing between outputs, outcomes, and impacts. So this just as a, as a general explanation of what a theory of change and impact pathway is. If you click please Norhan then uh, because this is an animated uh, slide. Uh, this is very much linked to the idea of a program and innovation management cycle a PIMC meta governance model. We will not go into the details here, but as Norhan mentioned already at the beginning. Um, also here this is uh, addressing a cyclic program approach, which um, mainly intends, aims at learning from certain processes we are investing in, <clears throat> sorry, to improve the then following processes, the following program cycles. But again, we are not going into the details here. MEL means monitoring, evaluation, and learning, and the theory of change and impact pathway is always the starting point of such a cycle. And the next slide, please, uh, Norhan. Um, I would like to inform you briefly about the state of affairs. What are we working at? And then uh, we briefly want to discuss with you and also um, motivate you to join this process here. So we started with a situation analysis and we identified one problem area. And this is the fragmentation of the actions and the networks of actors 
um, in the AUE region in the field of food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. So the fragmentation of actions and networks is the main problem area. And we identified uh, from there two fields of courses in these problem areas. One is uh, that there is a lack of cooperation mechanism, that there is a lack of knowledge and that there are, uh, is a lack of, of frameworks in which we can cooperate. And the second main field is the lack of uh, a proper coordination infrastructure that serves uh, the needs of the actors. So for that, we identified nine subfields of courses in those problem, um, uh, in the problem area and in, in those two field of courses. And I will briefly go with you through these problem areas. Normally, I don't appreciate these slides full of text, but here it's a bit necessary. So um, we have as a cause um, uh, of, of the, the problem area, a lack of knowledge management and communication. We always see this uh, together in one knowledge management and communication towards creating a knowledge management and communication framework. We see a lack of uh, stakeholders dialogues, a lack of stakeholders networking and stakeholders action. This could be improved. We are um, promoting here cluster building and cluster networking for several reasons, mainly to pool knowledge and to allow uh, um, an, an improved exchange between actors. We see a lack of analysis of re research output after research projects or research programs, uh, which affects the up and out scaling of research output. This has to be addressed. Um, we also, uh, do not see a sufficient information basis uh, for funders and donors for um, deciding on the investments to be made at the beginning of a program cycle. Um, the multilateral prioritization and investment processes, and this is very much linked uh, to the lack of information of funders, needs uh, definitely improvement. This prioritization processes um, are uh, we, we are suggesting to use also the theory of change and impact pathway instrument for that and this is uh, what we are promoting to establish this as really a standard instrument um, then monitoring evaluation and learning processes we are lacking of a systemic long-term approach on that after the project uh, research projects came to an end who is monitoring its effects, the outcomes and the impact? When do we have a proper impact analysis from which we can learn towards future investments in future program cycles? So we are lacking also of such uh, a, a, a systemic approach for monitoring evaluation and learning. Furthermore, a long-term finance um, mechanism to maintain a coordination infrastructure. So imagine a kind of coordination hub as Norhan already um, mentioned. Uh, this has to be financed uh, by somebody and uh, it is suggested to understand the subsidiary principle of governments for the needs in within their countries, but also on the multilateral um, level who shall finance such a coordination infrastructure to improve the partnership in food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. And this is very much linked to the question of what is the meta governance approach to maintain such cyclic multilateral programs. And the suggestion here is to use the program and innovation management cycle, the IMC that has been mentioned already. Um, in that sense, this is the state of affairs <clears throat> with regards to the co-design of a theory of change and impact pathway for the platform. It is not uh, a TCIP for the overall partnership in food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. This here is addressing just the design of the platform. And um, these are the preliminary results. And we should use um, a few minutes here before I give back uh, to you, Nohan, and please use the chat for that. What are your comments about that? Does this here really grasp the situation? Is the fragmentation of actions and networks really the cause, um, the main cause um, 
of the, the, the problematic situations uh, we are in or not, and which further subfields of courses for the fragmentation of actions and networks would you mention here? So please, uh, for the next three minutes, um, I suggest uh, you can also switch on your microphone, raise your hand and just give a brief comment. Do you have any further subfields uh, uh, in mind that we should consider, which has not been considered here, um, so that this could be included? I do not see any hand here and I must activate here my chat. Um, perhaps the colleagues um, who from Siambari could also help me in case there is something in the chat um, that could be highlighted. Uh, please um, switch on your microphone and mention it if the person who typed something wouldn't do it on herself. Yes, sure. have... we have a raised hand. Yes, Krishan Benik. Welcome, Krishan. Good morning. Please, the floor is yours. Hi, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> Stefan. Good to see um, you. Yeah, it was just as you were talking, I was looking at this this slide and I was looking at how do these nine subfields fit into those two that you had labeled. And um, for me, there was there's an aspect of um, it is it, I don't know whether it, it actually falls between the, the cooperation mechanism is about how do we how well do we understand the connections vertically um, is also something that I think needs to be highlighted. I get a feeling that we're all very good at developing, uh, you know, log frames and so on, and in impact uh, and and all the. Yes, you are interrupted. Yes, I think we lost, we lost him. Yeah, lost I think you. we have another comment in the chat that would suggest to build capacity in research and innovation management under section one. Dr. Frank, and he said that we have relevant experience. Um, I think also we have another raised hand from Habiba Wasif. Yes, please, like Habiba. Speak up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, Habiba. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to see all of you. <laughs> now, uh, in my experience as a uh, country trainer and evaluator, in the uh, Malibu Declaration uh, Evaluation Exercise, the biannual review of the Malibu Declaration Commitments. Working with the whole continental Africa for coordination purposes, it is divided into the regional economic communities. Now with your experience, I was with you in the early uh, months of this year and last year, uh, you, you saw that you worked well with the active regional communities, that is West Africa, East Africa, South Africa. The weakest is North Africa and all the coordination and mobilization, knowledge management, et cetera, all what you're talking about is managed at regional economic community level. So we have to deal with them uh, I mean, I think I had this conversation with you earlier. The weakest is North Africa, because North Africa does not have a regional economic community. It is just mentioned as North Africa and it's divided and Egypt has recently joined COMESA and is working with them. But unfortunately, COMESA is more commerce and trade oriented and not development oriented and they don't have an agricultural food and nutrition security plan like all the other communities. I would rely on FARA and I'm very happy FARA is the coordinator. Uh, in my work with the African Nutrition Society and all my African activities, uh, the unfortunate thing is that FARA, uh, all members are not so active in FARA. So FARA should strengthen its, uh, let's say, its activities and its membership and really act as a catalyzer and stimulator in Africa. And I would rely on, rely on FARA for this coordination and management. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Habiba, for your valuable comments, as always, and colleagues, um, unfortunately, of course, I have to hand over to the next speakers here. This here was indeed just to show you briefly where we are and also to demonstrate that what we are doing here is a co-development process. This is the main idea of Leap for FNSSA, to bring the community uh, together, to build a community with you and uh, to ensure that uh, you can give an input. Uh, with the next slide, please, um, Norhan. Um, and thanks a lot for the comments also in, in the chat, colleagues. We have to move on. This is just a two hours meeting here. Uh, please be reminded you can join uh, the Leap for FNSSA D groups. You will find the address here, as well as you could um, give an expression of interest for the platform process very soon. We will have um, um, via the website an opportunity where you can contribute to this theory of change and impact pathways for the platform. We will take note of what you have written here in the chat and include that in the process. And uh, you will be able to contribute very soon uh, to this process. And in case um, you are pointing at uh, a government or any other circumstance where you would say, oh, this is the cause that it does not work. Please be reminded three fingers are, are showing back to you yourself. You can contribute uh, here to the theory of change and impact pathway for the IRC platform. And with that, uh, thank you very much. And back to you, Nohan. Thank you, Stefan, so much. And I would like also to thank the attendees for being uh, interactive and for sharing their thoughts. You can also continue sending your thoughts uh, in the chat and we will collect all these ideas and try to integrate them. And please join the D groups and express your interest. Uh, now we can move forward to the next uh, presentation, the IRC platform functions and services. Uh, this will be presented by Prudence Makura, the director at the NRF South Africa. So Prudence is um, in this capacity that I mentioned, she's responsible for managing the bilateral and multilateral partnerships with countries in Africa, Europe, Asia, Americas, and the Middle East. She does this through funding collaborative research and human capacity development in all strategic areas of importance. She has worked for a number of research entities, including government in higher education, science and technology sector in South Africa for approximately 20 years. Uh, her role in the Leap for FNSA project as part of Work Package 2, she is responsible for facilitating the dialogues for action with different stakeholders within the FNSSA. And also, she has experience with Africa, Europe, multilateral funding and collaboration processes um, by being part of the Air Africa Initiative and the Aeronet, Fund, Leap, Agri and FOSC. So Prudence, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Nohan, and good morning, colleagues. Um, so as Nohan has already indicated, I will quickly take you through just the broad functions and services uh, to be performed um, by the IRC platform. Uh, these functions, colleagues, were identified through the different consultations that the Leap for FNSSA project um, have had with different FNSSA um, stakeholders. So uh, to make this presentation um, easier to follow, I've tried to group the functions into three main broad categories and uh, indicate some of the sub functions within each broad category. Uh, so colleagues, as I go through the presentation, please feel free to suggest further functions that you think are missing and uh, that you think should be actually included. So we would like to be as comprehensive as possible. Um, you can also just keep on uh, making your suggestions of the type of functions that we should also include through the chat, um, through the chat room. And then we can have a look at that um, after the presentation or also if we run out of time, um, then this, your suggestion then will be um, easily captured. So the first broad category there is um, for the, actually for the platform to try to increase the synergy and coherence between the different FNSSA um, stakeholders. 
And one way of doing this is um, ensuring that we continuously, you know, conduct situational analysis, uh, um, take stock of the needs and the gaps, you know, that exist. And this is at different level. This is at uh, regional levels, at uh, continental levels, and for different uh, stakeholder groups. And also um, the idea is to have this platform identify the priorities and alignment of the different research and innovation programs, the different initiatives and the different actors uh, within FNSSA. And also to assign the theory of change and impact pathways and um, to work on the AU EU knowledge management and communication um, uh, staple, uh, sorry, communication framework. This is quite uh, important, colleagues, as um, we would need to find a way in which we could actually institutionalize uh, the support for knowledge management and um, stakeholder dialogues. Now the second uh, broad um, subgroup of functions is to actually try to develop a learning environment, you know, and a knowledge base. And this also includes the long-term monitoring and evaluation concept. I saw when uh, Stefan was presenting, there was actually a comment on the chat, you know, about ensuring that we um, incorporate monitoring, evaluation, and learning um, within the platform. So this is also part of uh, the plan um, for the for the IRC. So the idea is to try to facilitate collaborative funding uh, of AU and EU research and innovation and capacity building uh, projects uh, to develop capacity building agendas and. Um, Impact, uh, impact strategies, and this can be done obviously in many, many different ways. Um, I mean, we could have like regular, we could regularly like conduct capacity, you know, audits and situational analysis to feed you know, into the partnership and design different um, capacity development agendas within the platform. And most importantly, I think, is to ensure that the platform actually provides regular update, you know, on projects, uh, uh, initiatives, programs, you know, at different levels, at national, you know, regional and continent, uh, continental level. And also um, to showcase, I think it's important that the platform showcase solutions that actually work. And um, this can be done in many different ways, like uh, collecting and, 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 and storing and also disseminating um, information to different uh, stakeholders, the uh, private companies, the farmers, you know, policy makers, research, researchers, and so forth. And uh, most importantly, the platform would need to also develop a long-term monitoring and evaluation and learning um, and, uh, concepts. The next slide, no, please. Okay, so the third uh, category that has been identified um, for this platform is um, establishing a long-term sustainable governance and the funding mechanism for, for, the, for the IRC platform. And I think uh, Stefan also touched on this issue when um, he was giving his presentation. So it's very important that the platform uh, develops and operationalize a governance and a coordination structure for a long-term vision. And also it's important to develop a coordinated funding mechanism and perhaps come up with a way in which we could have a funders networks, you know, for supporting the, um, the R&I partnership within FNSSA and I keep on, on a regular basis identifying different funding opportunities in line with many different relevant policy uh, developments. And also um, perhaps to organize and institutionalize different um, events and um, regular dialogues, you know, um, within um, the AU EU institutions or between different um, FNSSA actors or stakeholders. So um, colleagues, in a nutshell, these are the broad functions that have been put together thus far. Uh, so if colleagues um, feel like, or if you think that there are critical functions that we have missed, please feel free to share 
you know, this with us. You can put them in the chat or you can just put on your, um, your microphone and let us know what you think we, uh, is missing that should be incorporated, you know, into these functions. Um, I don't know if there are issues that have already been raised um, on the chat. Um, yes, let me check. Or you can just unmute yourself, colleagues, if you think there are critical issues that are missing that should be incorporated. I'm also checking, I don't see any raised hands. And no, no, is... yes. So like Prudence said, please feel free to open your mics and just uh, if you feel like any of the services or functions that you think need to be integrated as well. I think there are some comments in the chat. I'm just trying to. And also, if you are still thinking about it, it's okay. As we go along, you know, with the presentations for today, you know, you can just jot down your ideas as, as we go along, so. I think uh, we have a comment by Dr. Frank. Over the years, we've developed a number of projects with Sarima. Have a look at their website and capacity building. And yes, Victor Comerelli is right. Institutional funding is also important. Okay. We are well connected on the European side. Um, I think that's it. We have a new message to have targeted and impactful development projects between AU EU before the start of any project. A research scoping phase for any and all the development projects should be undertaken. Okay. Thank you for that as well. Yes, and I think Dr. Frank shared his email and we will happy to connect again with you. Okay, thank you colleagues. And please keep on thinking about it as we go through today's presentation, we can just keep on making your suggestions and this will be taken into consideration. Thank you colleagues, um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you Prudence so much and like, you said please continue adding your thoughts in the chat box or you can just send us an email and join the process i think carly already added the link in the chat box i think stefan do you want to add something or oh, okay <laughs> i think it's just thanking you prudence it was just an applause thank you prudence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Thanks okay so much. since we're short a bit in time we can move on to our next presentation about the funding strategy of the IRC, which will be presented by Henning Nipschild, the funding officer for food security, research and program manager in digital transformation in BLE, Germany. So um, Henning briefly is a biologist by training with experience on funding research management, international policies, knowledge management and development cooperation. He works in BLE, an institution which is directly subordinated to the German government and empowered to conduct business on behalf of the German Ministry of Food and Agriculture. He has been working in international cooperation most of his work life. He worked as a project manager, a manager in knowledge management within the field of food security, and he's currently working as a funding manager for international agricultural research programs, as well as a program manager in digital transformation. He's been working in different European African networks and projects like the ERA ARD, the LEAP Agri, LEAP for FLSSA, and also in development cooperation in Europe, Africa, Latin America, and Asia. So Henning, we can move to you now. The floor is yours. Would you like to share your screen? Thank you very much. Uh, I cannot share my screen at the moment. Okay, it's fine. I cannot, I think you have to, oh, I, okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, as all of you know, the project which is actually initiating this uh, IRC is ending in 
this year. Uh, the IRC has been launched, but what it needs now, it now actually needs a trigger of funds to push the network into research action. So how can we fund an international research consortium platform? There are two options, of course, that the, the, the network uh, has an acquisition of funds to fuel the partnership, but also an acquisition of funders who join the network with their funding schemes. So this is actually my topic today. So the situation which we have is, of course, uh, that the, the, the usual uh, research funder in the field of FNSSA is providing its funds to research and is a bit outside of this sphere where funds are provided for change, for putting research into use. So it's very important actually for the funders which are around and we are in networks uh, of funders working quite actively at the level of the EU AU platform. It's very important to get uh, the research just in contact with the innovators to have knowledge management and outreach tools to work in strong networks that put research into use. Because what we have the situation as funders is that we provide the funding cycle around funders and research. We always have a connection, a very close connection with researchers and a feedback from them. But the funding cycle uh, has problems, let's say, reaching out to the actors like private sector, farmers, NGOs, governmental organizations and research. So the relevant services, if you want to meet your objectives in FSA, and SSA are that you, uh, that you have a joint theory of change, that you collaborate with research for, uh, that you have a target group oriented knowledge management, that you have an involvement of the relevant actors, as I said, and a joint check against the SEDs and other frameworks by working with other relevant initiatives. So I want to highlight to the funders now that these services can actually be provided by the IRC. Because this is a large multi-actor network with many services where you have the joint agenda setting, you can jointly involve the actors from practice, build the agenda on demand of actors, jointly develop the research agenda and have a joint um, M&E. Uh, the, the, the research within this platform can actually be jointly launched by building alliances of multi-actors including the funders and uh, you have a set of knowledge management services uh, like the options to build thematic networks. You have a good information management as it was shown. You have a joint preparation of outreach and a joint dialogue with other initiatives. And in order to put the research into practice, uh, it is possible in an IRC to have a joint impl implementation of feedback loops from practice to research. So these are the services which are offered to, uh, let's say, national and international funding bodies. So um, it is in this structure uh, the work of the funders to have a coordination through coordinated funding, to pool funds to pay for research, to trigger pooling of in-kind resources, to pool funds for activities accompanying research and to pool funds for exchange and travel. The IRC on the other side supports the coordination through dialogue and exchange. So these services can be provided by the IRC. Um, what we have seen before from our experience in funding is that there different options, different scenarios to fund the research. Of course, you have the centralized call where you have national funders and international funders actually funding mainly their national research. And these national research entities, they build consortia. And you have all this work of harmonization of national funding regulations and eligibilities of different fiscal years and the availability of funds and the call secretariat and joint responsibility. This is a hard job. We have done this, for example, in the Leap Agri network. 
There are other options, for example, to build uh, research alliances on the platform. This would mean you have uh, funders becoming active partners of a research consortium. You build a small alliance of funders together with researchers, together with actors from innovation like private sector farmers and NGOs, but of course also other governmental institutions. So normally these two options can be seen to fund the individual research projects. Um, and of course these alliances can then uh, on the platform uh, partner up with other alliances who are working maybe in different fields or the same fields and then we can have thematic networks. And of course, this facilitates the pooling of in-kind resources and uh, to link up with other partners. So actually the steps to make it work, uh, once we attracted national funders, uh, we would have the activity to form these research alliances. The funders can link up with the actors from IRC. Uh, in, with the objective to organize the joint research. The funders can build agendas on sub-regional demand. Uh, we have actually in our network linked up uh, the relevant research fora and the fora of the practitioners, the private sector, rural actors, and these can be involved to set up a research agenda or research models. And of course it is the the, the, the real job of the funders to set up the call or to create alternative funding schemes. But then within the platform, it is possible to communicate research outputs for use. The funders can link up with the relevant actors and have uh, appropriate knowledge management concepts, which can be actually used to contact the actors. Uh, Funders can position their institution within the frame of the EU and AU partnership. And uh, of course, by this way, funders are uh, facilitated to identify new challenges and concepts by linking up with all these really interesting and relevant actors within the EUA framework and also link up to, to global concepts. So this is actually uh, what funders can do on the platform. Uh, here I marked a bit which are the IRC services and which is, let's say, the, 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 the funding of the, the, um, the funders, the national funders institution itself. But of course, coming back to my first slide, um, are we we have to see that once we, 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 we now have our different service models, which is the offer to the funders and the individual institutions are uh, actually participating in the organization of these IRC services have to identify funds. And this has to be seen how it can be done, but it has to be said, of course, as was said before that, um, Mm, the process of identifying funding for these services is ongoing because the, the research fora, uh, they are always actually in the process of acquisition of funds um, and all the different actors down to the private sector, down to the NGOs, they are uh, in this process and uh, can be linked uh, within the IRC. So this is actually a bit uh, the, the perspective of the funder. And as, uh, as you have seen, I work for a funding organization. And I think this is a very interesting opportunity. So um, this is basically it. Uh, what is very important for us to see is actually uh, because we have these different offers in the IRC, uh, where, according to your experience, do research and innovation projects have often deficits with regard to the mode or the frame to integrate FNSSA actors into research and innovation projects? So the actors would be research, private sector, 
producers, governmental organizations, NGOs, communicators, and others. So my question to you is actually, uh, what services do you expect? Do you expect uh, mainly services to integrate these multi-actors into individual projects? Or uh, do you mainly expect the IRC to involve these multitude of actors into the knowledge management schemes of the IRC platform to be able to participate or even both. So, so this is actually for, for us a very important point, which actually leads the perspective of the funders into this research into use uh, mode. So this is it from me. Thank you very much. I'd be very interested to hear from you questions or ideas. Thank you very much. I hand over to Norhan, please. Yes, thank you, Henning, so much. Um, maybe we have a couple of minutes if anyone wants to open his mic and comment on this presentation, or if you have, you would like to answer the question that Henning just shared, maybe you can get the, the, the question slide again, Henning. If you would like to, to comment on this, or maybe just in the chat box, read the number of the answer that you think. Um, I don't think we have any raised hands. Dora, maybe we have some comments in the chat. Yes, I think also uh, Habiba Wasif as well, you can please speak up. Thank you. I'm going to be brief this time. Now, uh, Taking the example of Egypt and my experience in two coordination, European funded coordination projects in FNSSA, how does this project plan to include the excellent research groups, research institutions and organs that are active in FNSSA in Egypt? Thank you. Um, you have seen actually the approaches we made to, uh, we, I think we have already done a very good job also with your support to bring these organs together. Um, I think what is really lacking at the moment is uh, the active research work. So, um, so this is, this is actually, but this is mainly my analysis, but because um, on the job, you can bring people easier together than, uh, than maybe just forming the network for, let's say, for the case of a necessity of exchange. So, so this is what is lacking at the moment a bit, but uh, this would also, from my point of view, be the mode. The mode would be uh, to organize research and involve these actors because we have the contact now and we have their agendas. Thank you. Thank you, Henning. I think we just have a few comments in the chat. You could go through them quickly. The funders pooling research is very challenging. Uh, see, Sigur, G20 wheat initiatives start with national calls, coordinating on timing and encouraging international collaboration, partners that bring their own funds. This is Victor's opinion. And uh, Dr. Frank said one of the relevant European networks to contact could be you plant, EU plant crop. And uh, Isabel is thanking you for the presentation and stating that number three is her answer. And again, number three by Dr. Frank. Okay, so please continue adding your uh, thoughts and comments in the chat and we'll collect everything at the end. And thank you so much, Henning, for this presentation. Thank you very much. Now I can. I think Professor Bader El Sava is lifting his hand. Uh, yes, maybe you want time for one final comment, please, Professor Bader. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. I am uh, from Egypt. Uh, uh, we, ha we have a good researcher, but uh, the problem, how can I find funders to my research work? This is my problem. We are yes. working good. Uh, try to search, try to succeed, but how I can work funder to cooperate it with me. This is my problem. Please help me to uh, offer this problem. Thank you. 
Yes, this is exactly the reason why we put uh, Northern Africa on the agenda, because we saw that in the EU AU network, uh, Northern Africa was, let's say, a bit uh, uh, outside because the the funding schemes of many national funders uh, at the international level were actually uh, focusing on other regions. So, so we, we I think we see this, and uh, it's very important that North African institutions become much more part of these networks. That's why we have these initiatives here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henning, and thank you, Professor Bed. Okay, um, we have to move on to our next uh, presentation. Um, we will be presenting now the IRC platform governance. It's the final element now uh, that we will be sharing about the IRC. It will be presented by Dr. Irene Anner Flampong, the coordinator of the Leap for FNSSA project from FARA, the research for development practitioner with over uh, 30 years of experience in international research for development practice and tertiary education in many African and European countries. Um, as I mentioned, she's currently the coordinator of the Horizon 2020 for FNSA project. And until August 2020, she was the director of research and innovation at FARA, the commissioner of the Global Cigar Commission on Sustainable Agriculture Intensification. In FARA, she also led the strategic orientation of research and innovation and coordinated many Africa wide projects and programs, including the science agenda for agriculture in Africa. She served also on several continent wide boards and steering committees, including the World Bank Africa Centers of Excellence program and the, consul the consultative advisory group on partnership for skills in applied sciences, engineering and technology. She's a Ghanaian by birth and she holds a PhD from the Vet School University of Bristol in UK, a Master of Science in Animal Production Science from Wageningen University and Research. And her current focus is on facilitating and studying national, region, regional and continental research and innovation priorities for improving food and nutrition security. Dr. Irene, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Norman. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay. Thank you for, for the kind words and uh, good morning to everyone. Um, I'm happy that we've had uh, a good prelude to what we are, about, we are introducing on the IRC. Um, there are a, a few elements that we couldn't touch on, which was the, include the membership and the knowledge and communication. But I think we have the opportunity in the coming consultative processes to do so. So let me go quickly to uh, look at uh, the kind of governance that we are proposing uh, for discussion. Um, and this governance is predicated on a lot of lessons that we have learned around the globe, but also within the LIFO FNSSC project, as well as some of the approaches that we have tried and tested in the field. So this is by no means um, uh, coming from, from, from the air, and we will very much like to hear from you. We would like to do a lot of things and to achieve coherence in the, in the IRC, but the governance uh, is expected to be very light. Um, and so the proposal is to have four key functions for such a governance structure, strategic, advisory, operational, and support. So at the strategic level, the proposal is to have a general assembly out of which a council will be formed because the General Assembly is huge and you cannot um, have too many meetings. And then um, from the strategic function uh, next, um, we would have an advisory function, uh, external advisory committee is to be set up. We'll talk about that. Then um, a support function uh, that will bring everything together, the glue really to this governance structure. And, and the more important bit, is all about the operational arm. How do we organize ourselves uh, to be able to implement those specific functions that uh, were eloquently uh, presented by, by Prudence um, earlier on? So that this is the heart of the element of the governance. And how do we include all the elements at the grassroots in the governance structure without it being, you know, 
overly uh, heavy. Um, next slide, please. So I will touch on the first function. At the strategic level, I mentioned that we will have a general assembly and the general assembly pretty much is all the members of the IRC, representatives, individual institutions that are members will have the opportunity to meet at least once uh, to be able to consider the direction of the IRC. Uh, their main task really will be to appoint uh, councils, uh, council chairs, the external advisory committee members, uh, secretariat heads, co-heads, and ratify policy strategies, operational plans, uh, themes, and approaches, particularly the approach. Um, we are calling it a clustering approach, but the approach around which we will organize ourselves. And I like the point that was made earlier by uh, Habib. There are existing um, networks, existing structures. The IRC is not seeking to create new ones, but to use the existing ones and cluster them around important um, elements. We'll talk about that um, in, in, in other slides. Then of course, it will uh, consider also the working groups and the overall strategic goals and set priorities uh, for the IRC in general that should be predicated on the FNSSA roadmap. Next slide, next click please. It represents the IRC and participates in summits and ministerial meetings. And the G is expected to be co-chaired uh, by both African and European representatives. Now we're questioning here whether it should be one representative on the Africa side or two uh, on either side. So again, we want to hear from you. And of course, it will follow a principle of rotating presidency and the co-chairs of the current year, of the ensuing year, joining, jointly preparing for the uh, general assemblies. Next slide, please. How does it function? It will meet, as I said, once a year, except if there are exceptional situations for it to meet. And they, it will alternate in terms of location between Africa and Europe. Next slide. The second component of a strategic function is the, the council. As I said, the General Assembly will not necessarily sit um, too many times, and yet the functions of the IRC must continue. So it elects at least about up to 11 representatives of the IRC members, uh, and then we are also proposing that in order to make it a bit um, um, more effective that the chairs of the um, uh, chair of the GA could chair the council as well. Their tasks again uh, will be to ensure that the decisions of the General Assembly are carried through, discussions uh, and approval of work group activities and progress, and ensures that the IRC representation uh, and participation of the FNSSA Working Group um, and the HLPD Bureau and its processes. The important thing for us is to establish a, a very effective link between science and policy. And I think the Leaf for FNSSA project has shown that this is really important. So in the field of FNSSA, this is one big task that we expect um, the IRC to play. Um, again, it will oversee the work of the Secretariat and the proper coordination function of the Secretariat and approve uh, projects, actions, and their monitoring. Next, please. Um, again, it works in, um, on the rules of the GA because it's part and parcel of the Assembly, uh, and, and it works. These functions are informed by the working groups. The working groups themselves are the operational arm. So everything around the IRC is informed uh, from that perspective and it reports to now. The, the council reports to the GA. Next slide. The second function area is advisory and we're suggesting an external advisory committee and uh, that will provide strategic uh, advice uh, and reach out uh, to be able to reach the objectives of the IRC. Uh, the composition is being suggested to be up to seven independent uh, members, 
to be elected or appointed by consensus uh, by the GA. Question we are asking again, should all the members be non-IRC members or not? Again, um, I would like to hear from you. But these members are selected on their own merits uh, and, and their, their specific credentials. Uh, their mandates will be for two years, renewable only once. Next, please. Next, please. Their tasks, uh, as I said, will bring advice uh, to the GA, the council, and more importantly, also with the working groups and uh, respond to specific requests uh, that the GA may have because there are a lot of changes and, and there are quite some turbulence around the need for research. So we expect that they will be flexible to respond to those needs. Functioning uh, will be upon referral uh, from the General Assembly or the Council, uh, and it will meet at least uh, once a year for that purpose. Next slide, please. The third, and I think the key important function uh, of the governance structure is the operational arm, the working groups. Now, I use working groups as a general term, um, as of now, the term itself, it's up to you. Um, as we do consult, we will see whether the term working group should be changed or not. But we are proposing that they are working groups because they have to be the operational arm. The composition and orientation of these working groups depends on what I said earlier, on how we will cluster um, the existing um, structures on the ground at local level at national level, regional, continental level, a whole lot of clusters already at the local level that could be um, grouped around the numbers. Um, next click, please. Around the number of um, around the number of issues, and so this clustering approach is an important uh, entry point if we consider the functions of the IRC. Will the clusters uh, be formed around um, operational elements? Remember when we talked about the functions, we are identifying functions around knowledge management, around capacity, around funding. We may want to cluster around that, but we may also want to cluster around thematic um, elements on nutrition, all the thematic elements of the FNSSA, four of them, or cluster around geographic lines. There are regional lines, and um, I hear that you mentioned the RECs, but then there are also uh, sub-regional organizations on research. There are continental organizations on research, on capacity development. And of course, at the AU EU level, there are a number of things. But we also recognize that clusters could be developed on ad hoc basis, depending on the need of the time. So, as to how the General Assembly will ad, ad, agree and approve working groups, we are thinking that we have to start from the ground and the necessary clusters and cluster networks will inform the kind of working groups that the GA would uh, approve as the operational arm um, of the um, IRC. Next, please. Next. The tasks um, for, the, for, the, for these groups, um, again, they will propose the, the thematic or sectors uh, to be targeted in different actions, whether for proposals, capacity development, they will all be in line with the strategic uh, priorities of the IRC, and they will implement, they are the implemented arm and report to council and subsequently to the GA. They'll function, um, on, on reporting to the GA and council, and they will benefit uh, from the support of the Secretariat. Next slide, please. The fourth and final uh, function of the governance is, of course, the, 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 the coordination function, which we are calling the Secretariat. We're already questioning whether this should include um, four or more or less um, full-time uh, equivalent members of African and, and European institutions. And more importantly, that the Secretariat would be uh, linked to one or two contact persons of all the IRC members to ensure that we have uh, an effective coordination. Their tasks 
uh, include organizing GA meetings, council meetings, EAC meetings, and working, working group uh, meetings and related activities. They facilitate all the governance structures uh, through the council. The secretariat will facilitate the work of the FNSSA working group and the HLPD and, and its bureau. Next click, please. Again, with the guidance and approval from the, the council and the GA, uh, it will launch um, FNSSA uh, calls on research and innovation, facilitate uh, the implementation of these projects and its monitoring and evaluation, and undertake relevant knowledge management and communication and dissemination elements of the IRC. And this can only happen because the secretary should um, integrally work with the working groups, um, depending on which theme uh, the working groups are working on. Next slide. Next click, please. And it's working directly under the authority of the GA and engages uh, with the funding agencies to facilitate technical and financial uh, elements for the IRC. Next week. The coordination, uh, I need to explain that in order not to um, have monopoly and, and avoid, you know, um, one organization being the main one that's coordinating uh, or being the secretariat, we're suggesting uh, a rotating system of responsibility um, for the coordination. And I'll show you in the next slide, which probably is my last slide, um, how, what we are um, proposing. That the, the coordination of secretariat will work on a rotation, uh, rotational system. And this is just a suggestion. And again, we're seeking uh, your inputs. So this is an example that if you look at a long-term uh, cycle of, 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 uh, of program, because it's a long-term platform, the first cycle of program, you will have four uh, institutions at a time. Uh, two on the European side and two on the African side, but they will have cycles of six years. And one, one uh, institution will drop off or will be rotated at the end of year three. So at any time of the cycle, if you move to the next cycle, you will have some continuity of the previous uh, set of institutions in the next cycle. And then a third set will join. And then the first step will drop, new set in the third cycle, uh, joining with the previous set, so that we always have a continuity uh, from one um, run cycle or one rotation to the other. This is predicated on a lot of work and, and a lot of uh, thinking around um, what the uh, cyclic uh, program or pr uh, process uh, has been articulating around the coordination uh, hub. So this is a proposal and we want to find out what you think, if that is enough to ensure uh, the, the, the um, establishment of a governance structure that is effective and that brings everybody on board. And that also ensures that uh, the operational arm, that's the bigger part, of the, the, the governance uh, gets included in the decision-making process for the IRC. Um, next slide, please. So two questions um, we, will, we will put on the floor. I have presented the four um, structures or four elements of the governance structure for the IRC, strategic level, advisory, operational, and uh, support. Are these sufficient? Do we think that it gives the leanness and at the same time the robustness to be able to um, coordinate this uh, IRC? Second, we have proposed a rotational coordination of three to six year cycles. And, and at any particular time, we will have four institutions um, coming together to, to work in this coordination uh, secretariat uh, cycle. Is this realistic or not? 
we want to hear you, want to know what you think. So I think this is where I would uh, request inputs uh, either through the chat or if you can raise your arm and share any of your thoughts on the um, governance uh, structure that we presented for the IRC. Yes, thank you, Irene, so much. I think we have the first raised hand. By Olanik Deji, please open your mic and speak up. Thank you. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for this opportunity. And thanks to Irene for that comprehensive uh, presentation. I just have a question on the organogram uh, presented. Um, I would like more um, information on how the uh, it's going to be a flow of uh, uh, maybe directive. What is going to be the, the, the I mean the the interaction between the, each of these uh, poles that you have already explained to us, and also how do we ensure strategic gender equity, especially in the composition at each level? Thank you. Yeah. Can I answer that, Nora? No, yes. That. Yes, I, I, I think we can answer, then we can take more questions. Yes. Exactly. These, these are very pertinent uh, elements uh, in this, which we have to take on board, really. In the one of the things we didn't have the time to look at uh, is the, the membership. But it, when it comes to selecting, you know, um, the membership at the strategic or advisory or operational level, I think the consideration for equity in terms of gender, in terms of region, in terms of themes, I think underscore all these um, levels of, of, of the structures. And I think we, we should pay attention uh, to the, the um, membership or composition of the membership of each of these levels. And I, I will take your point um, uh, down because it's one of the things that we are advocating uh, yes, thank you, Irene. Uh, Maurice, please, you can also open your mic, please. Yes, thanks. Um, my question is, uh, if the funders, private and public funders, are associated or are member of the IRC, you don't think that they will need to have a, a, a forum or a group of funders uh, to prepare, for example, calls and to avoid conflict in of interest, it cannot be the secretariat or other operational team. That, that, that has been a valid, a very valid uh, concern and, and question that many of us uh, have. And we're hoping that as we consult further, we will have um, more discussions and answers in terms of how do we strategically um, include funders um, and what, what type of membership uh, will they have in order to be complementary instead of having a conflict you know, of interest and maybe also swaying the directions of the, of the IRC. As I said, we, we didn't have the time to go into the details of the membership, but I'm pleased that uh, just in the next two weeks or so, we're opening up uh, a consultative process and we will focus very much on the membership as well as also on the funding. So thank you very much uh, for drawing our attention to this point. Yes, thank you, Irene. I, I just, I might go through some of the comments in the chat. Um, someone's asking, are NASAC member of the External Advisory Committee? Um, what yes, are number we, we proposed up to seven, but well, we, we also had the thought that it, should be, it shouldn't be too big and it should be an odd number, sort of. So okay. it's just a suggestion, yes. So what are for this co-budget and partners, number of partners with this governance structure for an IRC platform govern needs to be proportional, provide value added, both on EU and AU side. You already have governed conveners like FARA and at operational level, era type time limited structures. Um, we have another comment, very well thought out and articulated structure. Um, looks good to me, especially the rotating cycle to support continuity of experience and engagement. And um, three to six years is too much. I propose the maximum of three years. 
balance stakeholder representation to include funders, policy actors, researchers, and end users. Another comment is that I feel that the Secretariat may need to have some people who are technical to help with the facilitation of the working groups, not limited to administrative roles. Um, otherwise, we, we need to have a forum around the community of practice that reflects on the emerging issues around the IRC. Um, I think in regards to number one, I agree that the full governance structures are sufficient and should lead to effective implementation, especially if the advisory board is to be neutral and includes consultants from private industry and from potential funders. In regards to number two, three to six cycle sounds ideal. Um, Follow-up should be completed to six to 10 years. That may include the stability of main first success. Is there a national spreading for these initial benefits? And how we can ensure that there is a real participation, not more of the same. I think these are the comments that we can say for now because we're, we have to move on with our presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, like we said, please continue adding your thoughts in the chat box and um, follow the link that Carlo, our colleague, added to the chat box to express your interest and join the process of formulating the IRC. Yes, thank so, so thank you very much, um, everyone. I think this is a long process. It's a long-term platform. And I think things will unfold. But I think we have the key um, basics and I will invite you and encourage you when we open uh, the consultative process on the document, the manuscript itself to um, participate as much as you can. Thank you very much. Anyone Thank you so that? much, Irene. Thank you so much. Um, now I think we can move to our second session and enabling environment to launch the IRC, the existing networks, uh, networks as best practices. Now that we have presented some elements of the IRC in details and you have a better idea of what to expect, uh, we would like to use the second session to bring speakers from different networks existing to present the ways of linking the proposed IRC to these systems and share their experiences and reflect on the elements of the IRC that has been presented in the first session. So allow me to introduce Maurice Herrell from the ANR. He's the coordinator of FOSC and the deputy coordinator of the LEAP Agri project uh, with Isabelle Potet, the coordinator of LEAP Agri. So Maurice is uh, the chair of GPI Water from 2014 till 2021, is the vice chair also of GPI FACE 2019-2021, JPI Oceans as well. He's the coordinator of the Aeronets, Marinera, Waterworks 2015, Waterworks 2017, as we mentioned, LEAP Agri and FOSC as well. And he is part of the partnerships of Biodiversa Plus, Sustainable Blue Economy, and Water for All. Maurice, please, the floor is yours. I need to put, okay. Uh, yes, my, my background, it's I have a PhD on trophy wear modeling, and I was scientific director of different uh, agencies and uh, associate professor at University of Maryland. And thanks, next slide. And um, I'm doing this presentation jointly with Isabel. And uh, the lessons are coming from Lipagri, but also from uh, Orcaza. Orcaza, it's, uh, it's uh, a new activity in Europe to prepare one IRC on soil carbon. And it's operationalizing international research cooperation on soil carbon. And I will give some examples about that. Leap Agri background, the Food and Nutrition uh, Security and Sustainable Agriculture, FNSSA, you know, you know that. It's a uh, high level uh, priority in between uh, African Union and uh, EU. And um, the roadmap was defined in 2016, and LIPAGRI was one of the arm to, to, to feed, in fact, uh, this roadmap and to contribute to this roadmap. Next slide, please. And LIPAGRI, as Enig say, it's a, a group of funders, a consortium of funders with 30 partners and from 18 countries, and you have them on, on the map. Uh, sorry, there is a police with 
behind me. Okay, and uh, uh, on the map, you, when you see the African country associated to EU countries, our total budget uh, was 28 million euros. And we have uh, two main activity, one uh, funding uh, joint call and uh, on the FNSSA. And we had 200 pre-proposals. Uh, we selected 27 projects with 160 African and European teams. And um, uh, our budget uh, at the end, uh, we, we spend, uh, it was a bit less than the commitment, but uh, 20, 22.7 million euros. We are not doing only uh, joint calls. We are doing additional activities with Enig and Stefan, for example. And, um, and we, we, we wrote different deliverables and, uh, about development of a medium to long-term joint research and innovation agenda, as joint SRE but also a report on, listen, on lessons learned from uh, exploring new modalities for collaboration and alignment and draft proposals uh, for, uh, for long-term EU Africa research and innovation flagship program of FNSSA, which is quite the, something parallel to, to what we are discussing here on IRC. Next slide, please. Uh, the LIPAGRI output, it's, um, it's uh, of course not finished. It will, it will be end at the end of the year, but now it's associated to uh, 14 other era nets, which are uh, grouping around the agricultural domain in a, a concerted action funded by the EU Commission and the, the name is Green Era Hub, and uh, to maximize the, the impact of the project and uh, to promote cross-sector collaborations between agri-food and biotechnology era nets. And we could implement also new joint goals. But uh, what is important, it's even at the end of the project, to maintain monitoring and uh, of course evaluation, but um, uh, you know that the project and uh, um, collaboration with stakeholders are very often uh, years uh, after uh, the end of the project. It's the reason why this uh, inside the Green Era, we will maintain these activities for Lipagri. And we can mention that uh, recently you, you see that there is an uh, innovation agenda which have been uh, analyzed by uh, African Union partners and EU partners, and they analyzed 300 projects. And uh, they found that uh, the top 14 projects, which were the most promising, and they have identified in this 14, four projects for LIPAGRI, uh, which have been funded on different issues. Next slide, please. Um, and LIPAGRI, as I say, is not only a funding a research project, but also uh, is developing some uh, outputs like uh, contribute to development of agroecology, identify some cross-cutting teams um, and uh, participatory uh, process to define the final topics. It's, it's um, we are in the way to uh, try to uh, to identify a wide range of uh, private actors and uh, from farmers also, but to SMEs and to, to industry since the beginning of the elaboration of the project. And uh, we saw quite a, a strong collaboration between 
these private partners and the uh, academic partners, we can say. Um, we will promote for, for, for the future participatory, participatory approach through Living Labs and establishing a cooperation platform by the continuous engagement between partners. Uh, like um, what uh, have been presented on, about theory of change. Equilibrium of funding of, uh, of the project and, and for the new one, it's a major issues. And uh, inside, um, inside Lipagri, we had some difficulties with some uh, African funders and we have to find new way for uh, attracting uh, private, fund, uh, private partners, private donors to participate to the, uh, to the future course. Uh, next slide, please. There's too many things on that slide. Um, to sum up, based on uh, 17 years of coordination of participation to numerous uh, EU and international program um, and um, active in the GPI. The GPI is joint programming initiative. FATSHE means food and agriculture facing climate change and uh, water, Belmont Forum and we, we think that uh, we can promote uh, funders' uh, to, uh, new way of, of working in order to, to better integrate uh, the outputs of the previous uh, instruments that we have used. These evolutions have two main components. The first one is that public research, public funders, must be associated with private funders. And uh, of course, together to define with the relevant stakeholders, the researchers and the uh, users of research, mainly farmers, prog program priorities to be funded is the frame of a, a joint strategic research agenda. The recommendation should be merged and discussed at upper level for actions, high level policy dialogue and uh, different EU instance or African instruments. One course for proposals could be uh, defined and jointly uh, organized on what we call a call steering committee which is a group of uh, funders in cash or in kind. And uh, it's related to, to my previous questions uh, to Irene uh, about that issue. And, uh, and to, uh, to establish this group of uh, funders to establish rules of functioning and funding, because if we have cash and in-kind contributions, the definitions of common rules are important. Okay, next slide. It means that uh, our, our vision and so, so base of or what we are uh, building for, on soil, on IRC soil, and uh, where we are in charge of coordinating the funders in this uh, IRC uh, on carbon soils is based, what is important, it's what uh, um, Irene talk about cluster, we, we discuss about regional unit and a regional unit, why regional? Because in, a same part of Africa, for example, Abiba uh, talk about uh, uh, North Africa when she said that there is no regional plan, but but we have Prima. Um, it means that at the regional level, the, uh, the, the scientific questions are quite uh, the same, 
and also they are facing to the same problems in relation, for example, with water or climate change, and also the same policies and policy makers and stakeholders could, could be common. It's the reason why we are proposing to be based on regional unit. And uh, in each regional unit, we will have private public funders, donors, scientific technical advisory board, scientific advisory board, and um, participation to the different uh, re regional representative. After we have to mix all these uh, regional proposals and to, to see uh, how we can have uh, a pan-EU uh, African Union uh, approach and to, to see if we can uh, have uh, pan-European and pan-African calls between the different regions, or if it's not possible, it could be at the regional level that the course could be organized. And CSC meeting is a course hearing committee about the funders, which are preparing the, um, the uh, uh, funding issues. And after the, the, the governance, it's what uh, Iran presented with the General Assembly. Next slide, please. You see that it's uh, it's the uh, the IRC that uh, we on soil soil carbon that uh, we are building and you, sorry it's not very clear but it's the same governance with the general assembly but here we have a regional nodes one regional nodes could be uh, Central Africa uh, but also America because these. Uh, IRC on soil carbon, it's uh, uh, covering all the, all the different continents, including Asiatic, including North America. And it's, uh, each continent will be, will be in a regional nodes with, after it's exactly the same, secretariat, steering committee, scientific committee, different uh, um, outputs uh, through SREA, with different tasks. And after you have uh, BN, you have the uh, core steering committee of the funders, pri private and public, which will be under, there will be in fact one arm that will be here to serve the output of the different S area. Next slide, please. I think that I will, Okay, it's only to detail the regional unit, but I previously spoke about that. And the next one. Yes, it means that we need to have a temporary funders consortium and it's open to different donors, to private funders, to public funders, to uh, uh, NGO, uh, which can also uh, participate uh, as funding issues. And um, it's temporary because it's function of the topic of the IRC that this group will, will, uh, will work. And it will be always open to new partners to join this funding group. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Maurice, for, for this very detailed and interesting presentation that I think we have lots to learn from. Uh, I think there are several comments in the chat. Um, we don't have much time, but just a few questions. Can we have the web link to the CSA Green Era Hub, who's the Egyptian partner in soil health research? And are there any regional unit for Southern Africa? I think that's it uh, not sure if we have any raised hands or comments but anyhow we'll try to have a few minutes at the end of the session for more questions and Maurice, of course feel free to answer them in the chat box until we get the chance yes. to okay. open a discussion I thank will you so much the chat. okay thanks thank you so much and now let's move to the next presentation um from the perspective of the agri-business network 
envisioning a scaled rural prosperity in Morocco by Dr. Youssef Ben Maye, the president of the High Atlas Foundation and a visiting professor at the University of Virginia. Dr. Youssef, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nurhan, and salam alaikum, everyone. I'm going to describe uh, a sustainable development approach that has generated positive results uh, for the High Atlas Foundation in Morocco, for partners, and um, in that process, describe how networks have formed and how this agricultural uh, movement, if you will, uh, has also been able to provide some level of uh, reinvestment uh, for ongoing initiatives. The High Atlas Foundation, we began our work 20 years ago, uh, and we were dedicated to the idea of pursuing the projects that communities identify. We weren't necessarily, it wasn't about agriculture or clean water or health. We wanted to pursue the will as that locality uh, determined it. And of course, in rural Morocco, where 80% uh, of income comes from the agriculture sector, and as uh, rural communities are transitioning from barley and corn uh, to more lucrative uh, fruit trees and medicinal plants, we became uh, dedicated to the generation of trees as the uh, people in Morocco are. Um, there are 14 varieties of fruit that grow organically in Morocco. There are 10 varieties of fig that are endemic to Morocco. There are dozens of medicinal plants uh, that grow uh, wild in Morocco. Um, what we learned through the application and facilitation of participatory methods was that um, even as we are free to express and identify and pursue the goals as, as, as they are determined, uh, we oftentimes, um, and I say we, communities, um, are inhibited. We are not sure of the vision or the future uh, that we most want. There are social controls in community settings within ourselves. And so um, even as participation is vital for sustainability, it's not enough if we don't feel ourselves free. And uh, able to express as we will. And so what we've uh, implemented alongside or prior to community planning, we implement uh, empowerment workshops. These are uh, self-discovery, confidence building, uh, four day, we launch with a four day, 32 hour experience. Of course, it's all about follow-up, um, but it gives the opportunity for people and we, most especially focus on and work with women and girls, uh, but it gives the opportunity to analyze relationships in our families, in our communities, our relationship to work and money. And in that process, uh, build the sense of priority and, pro and, and uh, the necessary projects that will make, that people feel will make the most difference in their lives. And when we precede community planning with that kind of vision building, the projects that result from that, we have found to be much more um, uh, durable and the commitment and energy behind it is more measurable and real. Um, and so it's important to remember that uh, participation is no assurance of, uh, of priorities that genuinely reflect what people most want if, it, if we don't feel empowered to participate uh, as, as needed. And of course, with everything I'm saying, there are methods and activities activities and strategies and uh, facilitators to actualize this. Now, it's, in, in, as we do this region to region, uh, there are, of course, the, there are shared commonalities of priorities. Um, and water infrastructure to support the agricultural uh, development, particularly of tree nurseries, but uh, for water infrastructure for clean drinking water is also emerges as, as uh, a widely shared necessity, uh, priority of the people. There are, as in many places around the world, in Africa, there are families, rural families in, in 
all the regions of Morocco that make decisions in rural places and make decisions whether to send their daughters to school or fetch clean drinking water. Clean drinking water, as you know, increases girls' participation in education by 16%, according to the World Bank. And so as we try to build the water infrastructure to support our, uh, our agriculture and the people's nurseries, uh, we integrate that with uh, clean drinking uh, water. Now, in this process of empowerment and community planning and the emergence of, of project priorities, it, 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 a natural course of that is the building of local associations and cooperatives. And um, as you can imagine, integral to all the things I'm saying is training, technical, managerial, uh, decision-making, uh, how to organize a cooperative or an association. What are the laws that govern them? Um, what is the, the, the statutes and the financial management system? All of these things are essential components to this kind of um, enduring uh, local initiative and, and, uh, and movements. And as these, and I call it a movement because associations, when we achieve this kind of outcome in one area, it, there's a spread vertically. And so in, in, there's invitations in surrounding areas to come in and catalyze and assist these kinds of processes. And networks emerge. Uh, networks based on shared uh, planning approaches, networks based on shared project priorities surrounding water or agriculture or school infrastructure or school activities or youth initiatives. As, as we catalyze and assist and as movements grows, the vertical spread is real. And thankfully in Morocco, that kind of opportunity to create networks, to federate, is, is actually um, encouraged. And we're seeing not just the, the freeing of civil society as from 2002 laws, but now civil societies combining to, into uh, and, and forming umbrella entities. And as this vision building uh, continues, uh, we struggle in Morocco as in so many places uh, that we, the generation of raw agricultural product is of course uh, very positive. There are really good domestic prices in Morocco in relation to carob and walnut and almond and, and um, so many argon. Um, it's to the point where so many agricultural product, uh, products, um, in, in many ways, it's unfortunate that it's exported raw and not processed, but in other products, uh, it, it really requires organic certification to make economic sense to ex export, particularly around nut products. Um, but the value added component is essential. As this year, uh, we've been able to, uh, right now we manage 15 nurseries with local communities. We support their management and control. Uh, we've we've uh, transplanted around 900,000 trees this past planting season from those 15. We reseeded 2.5 million, able to enable the growth, the expansion of these nurseries. Um, and uh, we're fortunate to be in a position over the next uh, year to build eight more nurseries. We are localizing, decentralizing the control of nurseries uh, as Morocco has the need for multiple, for, for billions of trees, uh, community control and management of nurseries is an essential part of realizing that uh, enormous goal. But the value added component is, is critical and building business plans around it is essential. Everything I'm saying to you is of course, uh, based on essential partnerships. Uh, USAID Farmer to Farmer program helps in building those business plans. Um, the uh, UNDP uh, has been really important in irrigation uh, infrastructure. Uh, WE4F, which, US, uh, which uh, USAID and e EU and uh, European governments contribute to, and of which we are very uh, grateful to be part of, they are now assisting our process of Yes, we monitor those million, the 900,000 this year and uh, 800,000 last year we've been able to transplant. And as we grow, we monitor that with US Forestry Service, with the YCC Corps, but uh, WE4F enables the building of an application uh, so that we can eventually uh, have carbon offset credits, both certified and voluntary. And that's in a critical part of this equation to be able to generate revenue, revenue to reinvest back into the people, back into the projects they prioritize, and not necessarily agriculture. Uh, we have in one province, it, we're based in Marrakesh, 
and one province in the Marrakesh region, Al Haus, we're approaching a, a hundred schools without bathrooms. And so that reinvestment, that ability for this vision and this agricultural development uh, with revenue from monitoring of carbon offsets and that revenue can go back, as long as it goes back into the region, it doesn't have necessarily have to go back into agriculture according to carbon offset credit regulation. It needs to go back into the region for human development broadly. And so, but that agricultural development allows for reinvestment in school infrastructure, in projects, in artisanal projects, in uh, their cultural preservation projects that communities prioritize. And so this, this vision beginning with people's participation and empowerment, uh, uh, preceding decision-making for prior, uh, prioritizing projects. And, and leading to the initiatives that result in invigorated civil society organizations or new ones and, and cooperatives and the, the inf infrastructure for, for water and the agricultural expansion and the great opportunity we have for in Morocco for organic and certifying organic, monitoring the trees for carbon offsets. And of course the capacity building that is integral to all of these phases results into new revenue that enables the reinvestment and the expansion of this uh, of this model. Um, and so it's, it's, we're now to a point uh, to be able to reach out and, or, and, and to be uh, asked for partnership with, with groups in other countries in the MENA region and help others in this kind of, um, this kind of sustainable agricultural human uh, development approach. If we can go to the next slide. Um, I will say this as well, that uh, university partnerships are key to this in a number of levels. We have land from universities for people's, for community tree nurseries. We're fortunate to get land from government agencies, from faith groups. Uh, there's a monastery in, in, uh, that's no longer working in, but it's a, an incredible location in Azru and Tumlalin. There's a garden where we're able to promote medicinal plants. We have received land from the Moroccan Jewish community all land in kind, of course, from the High Commission of Waters and Forests, from the Ministry of Education in areas next to schools that are not uh, utilized by the school. And so um, that gift of land for nurseries is essential because farmers can't forego their land for a year or two for a nursery. They need to harvest every year. And so that, that partnership with public and civil and faith and universities uh, is and that contribution of land is also part of what launches this this forward. I want to give you a sense of of what one point five million dollars can do. Um, uh, one point five million dollars because we build from nurseries from seeds. If we were a, a seed, we can transplant and share with a farmer for about twenty cents each for a sapling. A seed into a sapling, you build the the nursery component. In the end, it comes out to about twenty cents. Uh, per tree. That tree in a private nursery, if it's olive or almond, will be about uh, 80 or 90 cents US. A, a, a uh, walnut tree right now is $2.50. A cherry tree, which is also organic in Morocco, is about the same price. Carob tree is even more so. Argon is about $2 a tree. And yet we're able to provide them uh, for farmers at 20 cents. At, at 1.5 million, we can build eight community managed nurseries. Those eight nurseries can generate 1.7 million trees a year. And that amount we've been able to calculate through, we had a consultancy with South Pole, with W4F, with other, other uh, entities, we've been looking at, at it, how many, how much carbon offsets can we generate with, with uh, 1.7 million trees, 8.5 million trees over five years. 300, about 350,000 offsets. Right now, it, a very incredibly modest calculation would have $5 per VCU, per ton of carbon sequestered. And that's low. The, the recent stimulus package uh, the, passed by the US government valued the VCU at $20. Uh, you know, e EU countries place the value at higher. And so you can see the enormous uh, opportunity that can create, it's, it's, it's an, an it's enormous challenge. The difficulty in monitoring trees, and because we're working with small landholders, they're spread around the country. The 900,000 trees I referred to this year, that's 160 municipalities and 39 provinces. And 
involving some several thousands of farming families. That's an enormous task to monitor. But if we can, with partnership, and achieve that, and and secure certification, then we're talking about a very significant amount of revenue at the end that can be reinvest, reinvested back into this process. And so, uh, and, and Morocco is not alone. And I know some of you where you are, uh, we've, we've been able to visit Cameroon where there's enormous uh, uh, organic product uh, that has this kind of opportunity. We reach it, we have partners uh, that we're, we've developed proposals and we're working together. They're seeing this opportunity in Lebanon and Jordan and Tunisia. And so um, we're here for whatever modest way to learn from you, to share what we have. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in Marrakesh and we'll plant trees together, or we'll visit where you are, and we'll plant together, inshallah. And uh, thank you all for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Yusuf, for this very insightful presentation. I think you have lots of comments in the chat. Um, I'm sorry I can't go through them all, but uh, just I see that making the point of diversification of diversification of revenue generated to all sectors is a novel idea. Uh, making the point where we need to understand the new means and mechanisms for mobilization of resources to help in ARD, um, not only contribution to the, its, its own development, but to the related sectors as well. And the estimated output from action plan is impressive. Um, that's why the reference says arguing, this is Stefan's comment for, um, this is another comment, is there emerging models of resource mobilization for and I? Uh, something we would want the IRC to address and how do we collaborate around the IRC to share these experiences and I think Stefan already commented on this that the uh, leap for FNSSA is arguing for a long-term monitoring and evaluation and learning approach based on the cyclic program model. Thank you so much Dr. Yusuf for this great presentation it's always our pleasure to have you. Uh, now we can move to our final presentation today um, from Azareka by Dr. Uh, Arek Quarenda. Please, the floor is yours. Dr. Anna Quarenda is the executive director from Azareka, and he will be representing the, the Azareka and I network and presenting reflections on the D4FNSA International Research Consortium. Oh, thanks so much. I would just delve in quickly into the presentation because I just want to take a different uh, perspective because I want to look at the region. And if you look at the region, I'm bringing in Asareka as an institution, as a sub-regional organization, working very closely with the FARA. And of course, I've worked with Irene for quite a long time. And I believe that this gives us a regional perspective on how we can form the networks or how the existing networks can be strengthened. And if you can see what our mandate is, we make sure that we work with 14 member countries. And I have seen that in each of these countries, there are representatives. And so Asareka's role will be to know who are these representatives from these countries so that we can bring them together and we can work together with them. Given that our vision is looking at the transformation of the agricultural uh, sector within the region. So just next slide, please. Because uh, Asareka has got these 14 member countries, we work very closely, just waiting for the next slide. We work very closely with the um, national agricultural systems, but we don't just work in a vacuum. We work based on a mandate. And this mandate is encapsulated under two key documents that Asareka works with, which is our strategy, a 10 year strategy, broken into two, we have the first medium term operational plan. But of noteworthy here is that these strategies clearly spell out what we anticipate in this IRC platform. We implement what is in this strategy because they are long-term, IRC is long-term. There's a lot of congruence. So that's why I decided to bring this and draw your attention to these two documents because we are going to be implementing them. And by extension, when we implement these, we will be contributing significantly to the IRC platform, which is part of the uh, uh, FNSSA objective. Next slide, please. So this I can uh, share with those who are interested in, uh, in reading them. Uh, I can have soft copies. Just the next slide. I want also to bring these our thematic areas. 
because as we build this long term IRC platform, it must have various pillars. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. okay as we, okay. As we work in, in, in building this IRC platform within our Asareka region, the 14 member countries, we are, or we are governed by four thematic areas, which looks at transformative capacity strengthening. So as part of the IRC platform, we have been working, making sure that the capacity, not only of individuals, but also of institutions in terms of infrastructure, in terms of technical uh, uh, bit is enshrined within our mandate. And we make sure that this is going to continue as part of the IRC uh, platform. The second thematic area is the agricultural transformation technologies and innovation. We continue to make sure that the technologies are generated and not only generated, but also scaled out. And as we scale this out, it is part of building on this IRC platform. The third thematic area is enabling policy environment. As we form our networks, we form networks that enable us to have a conducive policy environment. And this policy environment also leads us into having a functional market. And this functional market therefore enables some trade and some exchange of goods and services. So all of this when done in the long term will contribute significantly to the IRC platform because members of this platform will be able to, some of them will be policymakers, others will be traders, others will be within the Bureau of Standards, others will be within the immigration to enable the partners within this platform to trade and to have cross-border exchanges of technologies, exchanges of the, of the skills and capacities. The fourth thematic area that we also focus on is on knowledge and information management. You cannot build a platform like the IRC platform without a strong knowledge and information base. So given that this is one of our thematic areas, we've been working on this for a very long time, for over 27 years now, and that brings us into being a good partner and a good player within the IRC uh, uh, infrastructure. Next slide, please. So I believe that as we keep this IRC, which is a long-term uh, uh, interaction, all of these thematic areas will come into fruition. And I want to bring in these six major strategic functions that if we do together, we will be able to enhance our research and our innovation networks. The networks and the, 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 the research are done at the country level. But how can we bring this at the sub-regional level before we even bring it to the continental and the global level? So Asareka comes into this picture and we've been supporting this initiative by focusing on six areas. We convene a regional uh, scientists, regional uh, private sector, regional uh, academia, and so forth. So our main work is to bring in all of the key players from the countries, put them on the table at the sub-regional level, 14 of them, 14 countries, and we discuss assorted matters, we plan, we come up with joint interventions. We are also a facilitator. We facilitate regional inter interventions. So when we are in this IRC platform, we will continue doing this facilitation uh, role, bringing the 14 member countries that we work with onto this platform to make sure that whatever they discuss can be escalated or can be replicated to other sub-regional organization, which will make it easier for the continent to be reached faster than if you went to individual countries. So we bring all the countries onto a platform from which now we link them to FARA, and then that makes the continent to be infiltrated by all these key players. We also coordinate and we make sure that we broker partnership and we are a communicator besides also providing some little catalysis to make sure that our regional activities and regional interventions uh, are replicated and are implemented not only within the 14 member countries, but even beyond. Just next slide. It's okay, the next one, good. We are not working alone. 
as, as a record and as part of building this IRC platform, this figure is, this schema is very important because these are the partners that we work with. Besides working with the agricultural research from the 14 member countries and the extension uh, services, the farmers organization, national and regional, and also the education sector and the policymakers, we are also working as a Sareka, we work with the regional economic communities. So these form part of the big, big network, the network that we would want to strengthen within this IRC because they are our partners, they are our stakeholders, they will be part and parcel of this platform that is long-term and which is being um, built. We also work with the CGIR, which I believe uh, will be part and parcel of this stakeholder. We work with other sub-regional organizations like CADESA, like RECORAF. We also work with the civil society organizations. We work with women, we work with the youth. We are brought in private sector players into our network. And we believe that as we work together, we will be building this IRC. We have built this before. We've seen the benefits before. I'm just putting uh, this uh, before us that what we have experienced before can be uh, harvested as we move forward into building this IRC platform. Next slide, please. And uh, allow me to say, as I said, we move to the next slide, that this is very important, that as we build this IRC uh, uh, platform to make it long lasting, to make it stronger, there are some key players that we can't do away with. And as a record, we have been, these have been our strengths. We have been working also with uh, the ministers. So we've identified the high level policymakers who are the ministers themselves. So this will be part and parcel of this platform at the strategic level. When we have the high level policy dialogues, they are there and they are our patron ministers within our 14 member countries. We've identified and we have a, a committee of the permanent secretaries of all the 14 member countries. So this also bring a lot of strength in terms of building our research and innovation networks. We've identified and we have engaged with uh, high level governance organs like our board of directors, which bring in Comesa, they bring in the academia and all the players within the national agricultural research systems. We also have brought a committee of the directors general of the national agricultural research institutions. Only the 14 of them are in a committee that we have convened. So this is going to be a good platform even to bring the whole into, into the IRC, making it a very, very robust um, uh, platform. We as a Sareka have got a very strong Climate Smart Agriculture Alliance brought together from all the 14 countries. We have a steering committee working around the clock to make sure that all of these regional uh, CSA issues are brought on the table. We have a strong policy advocacy working group, and we also have a knowledge management community of practice. We have set uh, together a group of the private sector, what we call the Asareka private sector network from all the 14 member countries. So these private sector network are very important in supporting all our countries in mechanization, commercialization of the technologies. They will be part and parcel of this IRC. Next slide, please, because of time. Next slide. Good. So I just want to give you the next two slides, which end my presentation. Just some reflection on what I feel that Asareka and this uh, IRC can have as a complementarity for impact. So the Asareka Research and Innovation Network have contributed to a lot of uh, the innovation agenda, which have been brought by the FNSSA. These have included things like translation of the innovative capacities and achievements. And these are direct because we already have the capacities which have been enhanced. Some of the farmers, some of the private sector, the policymakers, the researchers, we can now bring them together in a round table to discuss some of the pertinent issues, not only affecting their countries, but also within the region. So this is a good impact that we have already had, which can also be translated as we move forward. We've strengthened the innovation ecosystem whereby we have brought together a socioeconomic impact for smallholder farmers, women, youth, by having them coalesced around communities of practice and innovation platforms. So this is going just to be uh, pushed onto as part of the IRC platform. 
We have also been strengthening the people, the communities and the institutions by enhancing their resilience to the climate change and also the shocks. And also we've been scaling out the technologies and the innovations, making sure that whatever FNSSA is propounding, is propagating, we have been able to do and would still want to continue doing. Last slide, please. Good, I want just to look at um, a way forward now in the last slide. What do we do now as part of strengthening our research and innovation network? There's a lot that we can do. We need to continue strengthening the network by utilizing the existing innovation platforms, also, also establishing new ones, having alliances, having communities of practice. We have them, we want to strengthen more. We want to collaboratively strengthen any innovative capacity of individuals, of organizations, farmers, policymakers, researchers. This is something we want to continue doing. We want to continue uh, making sure that the existing networks respond to emerging food system issues and uh, uh, shocks and stresses which have been experienced within our region. And last but not least, as a way forward through this platform, working together, we want to utilize the existing networks to scale up the regional priority technologies, innovations, and management practices. And this with the aim of enhancing the trade and access to the market, thereby making this uh, uh, platform self-sustaining and sustaining in the sense that there is benefit accruing to the smallholder farmer, making them see the value of such a platform because many platforms have come and dissipated, but we want a platform that can stay, but they can only stay when the farmers are part and parcel of this whole infrastructure. And Asareka is in there to work with you in this to make sure that this really comes to pass. Thanks so much. I know I've taken a bit of some time. and uh, Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm. And of course, Asareka is supporting the project in several ways and this part of it, like you said, I think we have a few comments before we wrap up the meeting. Um, I think if we can, this diagram illustrates how Asareka identifies a few strategic layers of organization of stakeholders and sets its boundary at the national focal points which allows for principles of subsidiarity to connect with the national level intervention levels. Could all these levels of the IRC family establish the three levels and demonstrate how these connect with intervention um, of others to achieve the impact pathway? Um, another comment by Victor Asarika is a member of FARA on the board, project manager of the Leap for FNSA. And uh, Leap for FNSA is a project governed and now the IRC concerned about the over-governance. Um, the platform is an interesting proposal. How will it interface with existing projects such as Terry does IRC, including its regional networks that are focused on a specific area? Thank you for the webinar. Okay. Um, I think because of time, I would just like to ask Dr. Irene to uh, say a final few comments on what we've um, heard today from all the presenters and all the comments that you added, whether in the chat box or um, by saying them. So please, Dr. Irene, just a few comments to wrap up the discussion today. Madam, Dr. Irene is now in the room. Okay. Hello, sorry, I lost connection. No, it's okay. Yes, please, just a few comments on the presentations we heard today and all the insightful comments we got from the attendees and the speakers. Please, the floor is yours, Dr. Eide. Thank you very much. Um, sorry for, for the break there. Um, just a few points, we don't have time, but a lot has been said. And I was going to make, you know, some very um, important observations from every, every speaker, but apparently there is no time now. But let me just say a few, a few points, not on the first part, but on the second part. 
I think the, the, what we learned from, from the example of the funders, the LIPAD, I mean, it's, it's very insightful that in terms of funding, we have to start looking at doing things differently. I think that's, for me, rang a bell. And also he, um, a point that was strong, um, strongly made was this issue of the temporary um, funders um, uh, network or funders uh, group. Because I think funders are seeing the flexibility um, as very important and open uh, funders network that people can come in, funders can come in and go. I think that's very important. A lot of lessons shared from Lipagri and also suggestions that I think because we are already collaborating uh, should inform us in this IRC. And then of course in the next presentation, a very exciting one, you see if you made us uh, very proud with a, a lot of uh, on the ground examples. And one point that I will make is this, that you underscored uh, the point that participation is not necessarily uh, the, the capacity uh, to, 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 to be part and that the empowering you know, uh, element uh, to ensure that all participants are able to um, be part and parcel of, of the system is very important. And I think for the IRC, we, we pride that our principle is inclusivity, but without empowering and capacity development, that will be difficult to, to achieve. And of course, um, listening to uh, my good friend, um, um, Dr. Warinda uh, gives a very good example of the fact that we already have things existing on the ground. And the IRC, we do not pretend we're going to start everything and we're going to build and use existing uh, networks, existing uh, project, existing um, cooperation, and ensure that we achieve this coherence that we are, we are talking about. Try to close the gap in terms of the fragmentation and duplication that we see by accessing, you know, providing access to a large knowledge uh, base which I think from the presentations that we made um, on the IRC itself uh, gives the opportunity for all of us uh, to work together to build an IRC that is long-term, an IRC that's flexible and takes advantage of what exists on the ground. But last but not the least, an IRC that is predicated on learning, lessons learning over time, that I think that will be uh, the, 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 the game changer if an, a long-term IRC is to uh, work with all the key stakeholders that we um, want to do. Uh, but um, permit me to end by uh, also announcing a little bit our um, strategy uh, for this consultative process before the launching of the IRC. I think that we, we have um, already said in the project, we've pivoted uh, from the project to uh, a, a, an IRC mode, moving towards the platform. We are launching a transition process uh, that in, involves uh, putting the manuscript together and opening it up for all of us to be part and parcel of writing the manuscript. We are going to have consultative sessions in three, in three uh, forms, one on 20th of May, where we will engage with all uh, members that are interested in the IRC to look at other dimensions that we may not have presented today on the membership, for instance, but also on the knowledge management and communication and, and other things, we will open it up. Second session will be on the 11th of July, where we will do the same. Uh, and then on the 3rd of August. Now we have chosen these days because each of them uh, precede another major event that we have to engage with stakeholders uh, in July in, in Brussels, and then also in September when we do the final uh, right shop, uh, 14 to 16th of September, the final right shop and the founding launch of the IRC. So we, we, are, we are attempting to carry all our, our stakeholders, carry our stakeholders through as we develop um, at least the first important uh, uh, document that will be led 
uh, into the founding launch of the IRC. We're so grateful, so much, so much uh, rich uh, lessons that I think we need to uh, um, take on board. And I think we, we are on the right track. We, we cannot uh, but to launch a, a platform that will be for all of us uh, to continue to enjoy um, what we have been wanting to do for such a long time. So thank you very much. And as I keep saying, the IRC is the game changer waiting to happen. And I think I see the element uh, from what we have uh, discussed today. Thank you, Noran, for the opportunity uh, for disclosing this. Thank you. Thank you, Irene, so much for these final comments and for uh, presenting the way forward. I think already in the chat, you can find all the links to visit our website and join the process, subscribe to our newsletters, and um, please be informed that the recording of this webinar will be available uh, soon on the website along with the presentations. Uh, I would like to thank all of our speakers and presenters today for their insightful presentations and all the attendees for all the comments they added and all their uh, proposals. And even if we were not able to read all the comments, uh, please be sure that we will integrate all of your feedback and comments in the process itself. And we are looking forward to seeing you again in the coming events and consultations. I would like also, also to thank our colleagues from Siam for the organization of this event and please uh, join us and have your say in the coming IRC platform and be part of the process. Thank you all so much and thank you for joining us today and see you soon in our coming events and consultations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you everybody. Bye. Thank you Nora. Bye. Thanks. Have a lovely Bye. afternoon all. Bye. Thank you, thank you Bye. to all the speakers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, all. you all. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night to all. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.